somebody wanted me to talk about estimating. So I'm just here sharpening my pencil. <laughs> you really have to sharpen your pencil nowadays when you're estimating drywall. It used to be, um, you know, back in the late 70s and throughout most of the 80s, um, we used to be able to get paid a really good penny for, for finishing drywall. Not so much anymore. Uh, it's so much competition today between the materials getting changed out and everything else. Uh, it's, it's, you know, that's kind of why I started my own company. I started my own company because I needed to make a little bit of profit on the drywall. I needed to make a little bit of profit on the hanging and then make the profit on the taping to get the same pay that I used to get just as a taper. But that's okay. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of hard work. Uh, so, what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the way I, I, I estimate. Uh, most of my contractors don't even ask me for a price. I don't price jobs out usually. They just tell me, Ray, it's ready, and I go and do it. So, I, I've got a great rapport with the contractors that I work with, which I really love. But... I have to be honest with them, and I've told them many times, if you think my price is out of order, please tell me. Uh, maybe I made a mistake. I don't know. I remember one time I estimated, a, or I, I sent a bill on a job, and the bill was $965, right, something like that. And he calls me up and says, Ray, it seemed a little high. And I go, well, let me check. I transpose the numbers. Instead of it being $965, it should have been $695. So I was really high. And uh, so I just transposed the numbers, but he called me on it. I adjusted it. It was just fine. But the way I like to estimate, or the way I like to charge for jobs is you know how much drywall is going to cost you. If you can figure how much drywall is going in the job, you know how much it's going to cost you. You know how much the glue is going to cost, the screws are going to cost, the tape, the mud, all of that stuff. You, you can have a really good idea how much that's going to be. I take that number and I add 13% on top of it. My dad once told me, if I can make 10% profit on every job, that's good. So I put 13% on top of it, and that covers my time for estimating the job and, and all of the little things that I do to make sure it's a nice job. Um, with labor, you have workman's comp, general liability, social security, unemployment. You have a lot of expenses on the dollar on labor. So you pay somebody a dollar, you're going to have to pay workman's comp, general liability, social security, unemployment, and then profit on top of it too. So what I like to do, instead of taking a profit on all of the other taxes, insurance, and everything else, I sit there and I break the, that labor up into two phases. So it costs me a dollar for to pay a guy. I have to charge, I get 13 cents because I'm going to get... 13%. So I'm going to get 13 cents. I am going to pay out on the average. Uh, let's see, I, I, I have it broken down to 47%. So 47% pays my workman's comp, general liability, social security, unemployment, and it still gives me a 13% profit on that dollar. I got to charge a dollar 47 to get 13 cents. So that's how I do it. Um, pretty simple. It's a pretty simple mathematics. Uh, so whatever my costs are, that's what I charge. And that's it. I mean, if I'm having to bid a job, I'm going to bid it kind of high, <laughs> but it's never going to be what I bid. Always going to be under what I bid. If it's a big job, it's probably going to be about a buck and a quarter a square foot. Could be a little less than that if it's a big job. If it has a lot of cathedral ceilings, vaults, hard stuff, it's definitely going to be a buck and a quarter or more. Uh, I've often said, I could, at one point I told people, I can do any job for a dollar a square foot. Hang it, tape it, materials and everything else. That's not the case anymore. Drywall's gone up, labor's gone up, everything's gone up. Heck, I even got taller. So, it's, uh, everything's gone up. So, what I've done now <laughs> is I go in there and I estimate it the best I can with the labor materials and everything else but then I put a little bit of padding on top just to make sure 
I, I'm not in it for the practice anymore. I don't want to show up at a job and find out that I'm short. I've done jobs before where I measured the house up and I never walked into the basement stairwell and I was 13 sheets short and that's a huge blow for a little guy like me. So I don't want to be short anymore. I don't want to be, I don't want to have to practice what I'm doing anymore. I just don't. So I will put a little bit of padding on it. But again, too, when everything is said and done, I'm going to, here's my labor costs. Here's my material costs. This is how much I'm making for profit on labor. This is how much I'm making on profit for, for materials. This is what my workman's comp cost me. This is what my general liability cost me. This is what my unemployment insurance cost me. This is what my, my uh, I mean, and I will show any builder all of those numbers. And, and I just, I'm honest about it. I sleep really good at night, and that's what's important to me, just to be honest. So if I'm estimating the job, my, my estimation is going to be kind of high, but when my final bill comes across, it's going to be cheaper than my estimating. Now, I have done other jobs where I estimated the job, and then I show up at the job, and it is nothing like I estimated. I mean, I remember doing this one job where the print said all eight-foot ceilings upstairs. When I got there, there wasn't an eight foot ceiling in the house. Every ceiling was nine to 10 feet. And with vaults and trying, I mean, vaults and trays and everything else. And I'm thinking, your print's telling me eight foot. I can't do this at this price. Yeah, we know, we know, we know. And, uh, and my $17,000 price went to like twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000. Uh, because the downstairs too, I was only supposed to do half the downstairs, it was a remodel job, and they gutted the entire house. Now I had the entire house to do. So I showed up at the job and it was absolutely nothing like I bid. There's one time my price went way up, it didn't stay, it didn't go low at all. But when all everything was said and done, I still only made 13% on labor and 13% on, on materials. That's all I made. So. That's pretty much all I have. I mean, estimating is estimating. Different areas are going to be different. Different areas are going to have different labor costs. I know the carpenters in, in Missouri where my dad lives, I think if they're making $10 an hour, they're doing it like this with a great big smile on their face because it's, there's not much work down there. And they, only, they can take what they got. I mean, that's all, that's all there is down there. And uh, in other places, my gosh, you can't, you can't buy uh, 15 minutes of a carpenter's time for 50 bucks because it, they get more than that. So um, that's all I have. So, hey, each area is different. Bid it honestly. Give people their money's worth. A friend of mine said, uh, he was an a, a old Jewish guy, actually. I was working in, I was working in um, Arizona, and he told me this. He says, Ray... Tell people what you're going to do, give them a good price to do it, and do exactly what you tell them you're going to do, and you will be successful. So, that's my advice to you. Tell people what you're going to do, give them a good price to do it, and then do exactly what you told them you were going to do. And have a good day. Hey, if you really like this video, subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, share it with somebody else. You have a great day.